Welcome back to another video. My name is Derek. Today we're going to be taking a detour from typical World Repairs and I'm going to be doing an experiment using some isopropyl alcohol. This is 70% isopropyl alcohol, which means that it's not necessarily ideal for cleaning electronics. It does have distilled water in it and you can get away with using it. I want to see if there's a way to increase it from 70% to something higher. So let's get started. The process that I'm gonna be using to do this is something that I've been wanting to try for a while. Basically, what I'm gonna be using is salt. Both water and alcohol have OH groups that easily hydrogen bond together. So they don't care whether they're bonded with water or alcohol. They'll just mix together like normal. So there's no longer two separate liquids here. It's one liquid, a water alcohol mixture. Once you get this mixture formed, it's really hard to separate them. You can separate it through something called distillation. Distillation is when you heat up the liquid and because alcohol boils a little bit easier than water, the vapor that comes off of this liquid will be a little bit more rich in the alcohol. But there's an easier way to separate alcohol and water. You can just add some salt. In order for this to work, you need a lot of salt. You have to add around 28 grams per 125 milliliters of water. Now I've only seen this done. I haven't actually done it myself. So today we're gonna do it and see what the results are. Let's get started. All right, so I've got some 70% isopropyl alcohol. It's got a 70% concentrate and the inactive ingredient is purified water. And today I wanna find out if we can get this percentage higher. I'm gonna borrow my, one of my wife's flower vases. And let's take off the lid. Let's pop off the seal, just like that. And let's pour this in. And we're gonna see today if we can separate the water from the alcohol. Now I've seen a lot of people do this online. However, whenever they do it, they're always adding, for some reason, maybe there's a reason for it, some additional water. They're not just going with the 30% that's there. Maybe there's a reason for it, but I'm gonna figure this out. So, and the way we're gonna split this is using salt. What's needed is 28 grams per 125 milliliters of water. This contains 473 milliliters. And doing some quick math, that brings the water content to 142 milliliters. So doing some quick calculations, 28 grams per 120 five milliliters, we find out that in order to get the right ratio of salt to 142 milliliters, we need approximately 32 grams of salt. 32 grams of salt is just over five teaspoons of salt. In fact, five and a third, 5.3 teaspoons. Here I've got a teaspoon and we're gonna measure out five and a third roughly of this. We're gonna to try to get as precise as we can. So let's pop this guy open and we'll pour out, there's one, we'll drop that in there. And there's two, Put that in there. Measure out a third one, Put that in there. There's a fourth one, cut off the top, Put that in there. And for a fifth one, it's quite a bit of salt. And we'll fill this up about a third of the way, roughly, and pour that in there as well. So now at the bottom, we have got all the salt that we need, roughly 32 grams of salt. All right, and not to not make a mess, I'll set this aside, collecting it on a paper so I didn't get it all over my desk. And let's stir this up and do this for a few minutes until the salt is all the way dissolved. And we're getting somewhere. Let's see what that looks like right now. It's pretty cloudy and there's still quite a bit of salt at the bottom. Keep going until it's all dissolved. Let's see, even though we're not fully done mixing, let's see if anything starts to happen. And we just let it kind of start to settle. What we're looking for is a distinct line between the top and the bottom section. And actually, I'm seeing one form there. You may see that? Look at that. There's an actual layer inside the liquid where the salt water has now condensed at the bottom. And up here, we have a higher concentration of isopropyl alcohol than we did before. And I'm assuming if we get all of the salt mixed in there properly, what we'll end up seeing is hopefully something close to a 70-30 relationship here. 
So I'm going to keep stirring until all of the salt that's there at the bottom, which looks like there's just maybe about a teaspoon left, will uh, dissolve and we'll see what that looks like at that point. All right, this last little bit has taken like 10 minutes to dissolve. My arm is really tired. All right, let's see now if we see any results. And would you look at that? Look at that line that's starting to form there as it moves up. You see that distinct line? The way that it moves has this like ripple effect, like, like a wave. Now, that doesn't mean that we've done a perfect job splitting this. I mean, distilling the alcohol out of it and retaining that would be the way to achieve a higher percentage, maybe a 99 or 100%. I don't even know if that's possible. I suppose alcohol, but this is definitely now more concentrated above a 70%, as it almost looks like from what I can see here is kind of like an 80-20 relationship. There's got to be a better way to measure this, but that is super neat. Let me pour this into just a regular mason jar, and I'm going to take a marker here. We'll see if we can mix into the isoprobacol a little bit of color so that it's easier to see. I'll take a piece of paper and I'll put it behind it. And you can actually see a clear distinction between the top and the bottom there. I'm going to mix this up and see if it splits. You almost see like bubbles on that layer down there. But look at that difference. And here, the level here, looks more like a 70-30. All right, so let's try to collect this real quick. I've got just a regular turkey baster here. I'm gonna carefully just suck up off this, just the top layer, and we'll transfer that over back into the alcohol container, which will now have a slight pink hue. That's okay. We'll carefully suck up some more off the top, trying not to agitate the liquid. And we'll push that in. I'm sure my wife is loving that I'm using her about flower vases for this, but. Let me go ahead and pour what I hope is the rest. Just guessing. It's definitely not. Fill that up close to the top there. I think I've got a lot of the water here, but I'm going to see if we get some separation in this one. There is a, a clear level definitely forming right here as it moves up. It's hard to see because it's in line with... It's hard to see because it's right... It's kind of in line with the lines here. We'll let this settle for a few minutes. Now it's subtle, but there's definitely a, di a difference in color between these, basically this line and below. And now that it's been a few minutes and I'm not seeing that line move at all, I'm gonna go ahead and empty out a little bit more from the top. Now let's see if I can empty the rest of this into there. And we can. So there's definitely something happening here with like almost like a, a lava lamp effect. That looks really cool. Look at that. Watching it kind of settle out like the droplets bounce up and down that's pretty cool looking as this settles i'm going to be able to extract even more out of it leaving basically just the salt water behind so let's go ahead and extract some more carefully pour that in and pour that in i'm just going to keep doing this until we get down to the last little bit now we've got about a half inch left in there carefully try to extract it as well stir that up i want to see what happens now? Kind of like bubbles forming on that layer. We'll go in for a little bit more. I think that's as close as I want to get without the risk of sucking up more water or any water really. And looking at the bottom of this, there is no distinct line or anything. I just have a slightly pink bottle of isopropyl alcohol. So now we have a higher concentrate of isopropyl alcohol than 70. Not exactly sure what it is, but one of the experiments that I want to run is I want to see if there is any salt deposit left in the uh, the alcohol. So I'm going to let this settle a little bit more. I'm going to try to extract it, and then I'm going to heat it up and see if we've got any salt left in it. As it evaporates, it'll leave behind the salt. All right, so now I'm just going to try to grab just a little bit off the top here, and we'll put it on the spoon here. This is just for science. You get out a my hot air gun will turn it up to the hottest it can go and I'm gonna try to boil the alcohol and I want to see if there's any uh, salt deposits left behind oh, look at that sizzle so it definitely left behind some residue so I just went and picked up a water filter I remember seeing a I remember seeing a YouTube video of someone demonstrating how you could basically filter 
things. I think they did some Listerine, some Mountain Dew, some other things, and it was able to. But it took the green out. Yeah, it's clear. Zero water takes the green out of Listerine. <laughs> That's your new campaign. It's like the Listerine, for example. It took out all the color, but the alcohol stayed. So I'm hoping that I can extract whatever remnants of salt I left behind by taking this apart. There's that. Let's get out our filter. Let's peel that off. Screw this in nice and tight. I want to see as well, can it get rid of the little pink hue that this has? So let's go ahead and pour this in and see what happens. This is just for educational purposes only. And goes the pink. And now we wait. Oh, and out of the bottom already, it's slowing some very clear liquid. I'll let that slowly fill up and look at it come out of there. Making some fun waves in there. There's still a very small amount left coming out. I'll let that fully filter out. All right, we're down to the last few drops there. So that's probably good enough for now. But would you look at how clear that got? No, no more color. All right, we're gonna try the spoon test again. Let's heat it on up and see what happens. Wow. It's all gone and there's no residue at all. That's amazing. So I'm gonna extract a little bit of alcohol in here. I'd like to rinse out any of the old alcohol in here. And I'm gonna use this as kind of like a funnel. This has got a slightly wider neck. And let's pour back our refined isopropyl alcohol. All right, just like that. And now we've got a full bottle and it's clear again of not exactly sure what, but it's definitely more than 70, as that is the water we were able to extract. And you can still see they have a little bit of isopropyl alcohol left there, but that contains salt, so not gonna worry about that. We'll just check this. All right, so now we have something that is higher than 70%. In fact, given the amount of water that we were able to extract, I dare say this is in the 90 percentile. I'm also really glad that I decided to test whether or not when it evaporates if I'm gonna have salt left behind because sure enough, salt dissolves in alcohol and stays in the alcohol as well. But the filter that I got seemed to take it all out because I've off camera, on to, beyond, beyond just do what I did on camera where I showed it evaporating, I tested even more and I had zero residue left when evaporating the isopropyl alcohol. Which means although I probably still have some water in there, I don't have salt and I definitely have more isopropyl alcohol. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Did you enjoy this? I sure did. And now I have a way to relatively quickly get a higher concentrate of isopropyl alcohol so that I can clean my electronics without worrying about there being too much water. Maybe this was a waste of time, who knows? Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.